Good morning, folks. Starting with NASA's Earth Observatory showing a before and after of the Colorado flood zone. The secondary story I've tried to share all along with this is the drought abatement. The southwest used to be the near ubiquitous exceptional drought zone, but now soil moisture is recovering and on the rise as moisture continues to head north from the tropical development. This is Manuel, courtesy of NASA's TRMM. He's now weakened at dumping all his water either on Mexico or north along the pressure convergence, which, as he did all last week, flooded Colorado. Before we come back to that, however, we also got a serious system cresting the northwest coastlines associated with a big low pressure system. The primary low, however, is at the Great Lakes. The counterclockwise inward drive yanks warm moisture up from the Gulf, converges it with cooler Canadian air, sparking storms all across their convergence line this evening. In the Atlantic, Development continues, especially near the Gulf. Umberto's remnants continue to head north, perhaps on their way to Europe, where a few Mediterranean sunset pop-up storms are the major story until that low crests the UK later today. Copyright and courtesy of the Japan Meteorological Agency, they now classify Usagi as a super typhoon. This will be a major, major event when it strikes. Meanwhile, south of that, can't believe these high pressures are still able to regulate, keeping most of the rain south and then east to New Zealand. We'll kick it to space weather with Bruce Gary. You're highly encouraged to review his website. We've got the latest from Comet Ice on here and it appears to be fading. Those hoping for a visual splendor or electro-induction event may have weakening hopes. However, those who have heard fly on the wall know the most realistic danger from ice on is a pre-1AU breakup or distending and spaghettification of the debris. Such a thing is possible if its brightness is weakening. Had a gamma ray burst make the evening news out of the Virgo constellation yesterday. The coronal hole stream surrounding Earth began to slightly weaken its speed. Geomagnetic instability never presented itself. The flaring has failed to get back into mid-sea range, but at least it's not completely silent. That previously mentioned sunspot group is now turning away. We'll need to give me a reason to look at her again. Down south incoming, still patiently waiting to make it to be earth facing, debating whether or not he should deliver a storm. Also, got a bit of sunspot berth out ahead of the intriguing incomers up north, which we'll monitor as they turn and which would be giving Mercury a proximity warning if that wasn't a backside magnetic connection. It's not actually connected near those spots. Top story from our star was the earth directed CME. I can definitely say two things now. It's very, very, very weak, and there's almost no chance it misses Earth. Stereo B has Earth off to the right here, Now, whether we detect strong signatures in the solar wind is another story. I actually kind of doubt it, but either way, NASA and NOAA's Enlil Spirals both show a glancing blow from this week CME on Monday. ISWA still showing coronal hole power to be lagging, now even true of the Earth-turning group. The very weak hole facing Earth now has produced no significant seismicity. Largest quakes of the day were here, not major at all. Got some shakes to monitor across the Pacific as well. Tiny filament popped directly Earth facing this morning, but it's far too small to be of consequence. The image processors are leaving Helio Viewer and the rest of us about a day behind, so near the 48 hour SDO MPEGs and various wavelengths. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.50 AM Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.